Thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, my name is Christopher Rausch. I'm clinical application specialist for Vision IT for a few weeks now. Before that, I uh, worked as a medical physicist in the clinic for about 10 years, most recently in the uh, Klinikum Darmstadt. Um, that's why I want to say a special thanks to the Department for Radiotherapy at the Klinikum Darmstadt under Professor Weiss, because he uh, was so kind to give me the permission to present the following data. So a little outlook on what I want to tell you is, uh, so we'll start with the question, what is the premise, what is the clinical setup that we are dealing with when we uh, conduct hyperarc treatments in this niche of the brain SRS treatments, followed by um, the description of a typical workflow for SRS brain in combination with Alina T. And I will conclude with um, a few words about the commissioning and QA we did prior to treating our first patient. <clears throat> so the department in Darmstadt is equipped with two variant true beam accelerators. Uh, one of them is an edge model that is specialized for stereotactic treatment. They have uh, latest uh, true beam versions, area versions, so not the latest, but they're fit for hyperarc. And uh, this machine is equipped with a high-definition MLC with 2.5 millimeter leaf width at the ISO center, several uh, flattening filter-free modes to deliver the high dose rates that are re required for the stereotactic treatment, a six degree of freedom couch to correct for all these uh, dimensions, and last but not least, an Alina TSGRT system, which the department is using, has been using for two and a half years now treating like every patient, every fraction, and uh, this year they have gone markerless too. <clears throat> so a short overview about variant hyperarc for those who might not know about it. This is an uh, option that you can purchase that is for multi-metastases SRS that has uh, it's been using only one common isocenter. Um, you can treat like the, the most that we did was 12 metastases <coughs> at, in one single fraction. And it usually consists of a full rotation at the couch angle zero, uh, combined with several non coplanar semi-arcs at uh, fixed couch angles different from zero. And the nice thing about it is it's fully automated, so there's a own collision model, and when you press beam on, the whole treatment is going to be uh, applied without further clicking or um, confirmation. So a picture is worth a thousand words. So I brought you a little video here that you can see what happens. So this is the full rotation that usually, usually takes place at couch zero, and then the couch starts moving by its own. And there are several semi-arcs at the different couch angles up to maximum rotation of 90, respectively 270 degrees. Um, HyperArc also gives you a bunch of very nice algorithms and optimizers that give you fantastic dose distributions. You can see here two quite adjacent metastases. Um, you see there's practically no dose bridging effect between those. The dose almost drops to 50% on that sh very short scale. <clears throat> For patient immobilization, we are using the um, Encompass intracranial fibroplast system by the company QFIX, which you can also see in the room next door. And it uh, consists of the Encompass board that you can see here that's attached to your treatment couch and like a two part head mask of very thick material, very, um, very good fixation. It's a replacement for your stereotactic frame that you got in the past also has uh, two hand grip arrays, so the patient can hold on to those. It's very stable for the shoulders. We are using open face masks because, of course, we want to do surface tracking too, but also it's more convenient, uh, comfortable for the patient, so you got to have some aperture where you can track the patient's skin in the aligner T system that would look like this where you need to define, as usual, a meaningful region of interest. So you stay away from 
the borders of your mask, of your aperture, and you, if necessary, you can spare the eyes because sometimes patients don't close their eyes, but they tend to watch the gantry move around them. So you take them out of the region of interest. So much for the premise, what we're trying to do. So now I would like to try to describe like the perfect workflow for SOS Brain uh, with Aligner T. So this begins with your patient coming in and he or she is lying down on a treatment couch. So you start your monitoring right from the beginning and try to um, correct for the rotations first, because uh, this is a point where you already can see uh, potential rotations when um, your patient is lying down. So um, then you put on your mask and try to you know, keep the rotational real-time deltas as low as possible because we made the, uh, we had got the experience that if you close the mask, there's not much correcting possible anymore. So you would try to do that before you put on the mask, but then it's pretty solid after you did. So after that, you correct for your remaining uh, translational shifts with the help of a liner T by either doing it manually, open the brakes of your couch, or using the move couch feature to do it automatically. And after the couch shift, you see that your patient is already well within tolerance, at least according to Alinity. The department has used um, thresholds of one millimeter in translation and one degree in rotation. Just to give you an idea about the rotation, a one degree rotation at a distance of about six centimeter would be equal to about one millimeter shift. So this is a typical distance that your metastases, which might be spread out within the skull, have to your isocenter, which is usually located in the center of mass of all the uh, metastases that you might uh, want to treat. So uh, followed by this, there is the imaging, of course. The Combeam CT remains the gold standard for patient positioning with SRS. And uh, when you uh, conduct your uh, Combeam CT and do the matching, you see here the remaining um, couch shifts that you would need to apply. And you see they're already very small. It's just 0.6 millimeter here, 0.3, 0.3 degrees. So Alana T already got you pretty close to your uh, plant position here. And if you um, compare these shifts that have to be done according to radiographic imaging to the real-time data at that moment, you see that the discrepancy between those is also very small, it's just 0.4 millimeter at max. So now your patient positioning after Combium CT is complete. Your patient is um, in the plant position according to your radiographic imaging, and there can, there's the possibility that you can see a slight residual real-time deltas like here. That's due to the fact that your patient is not a phantom, uh, might have slight variations in the face, but uh, as usual, you can always uh, acquire a reference capture in the treatment room because now you know you have done your COMBIM CT, your patient is where he's supposed to be, and you just take the reference capture so you can monitor him in this uh, position verified by your COMBIM CT uh, during the fraction. And this reference capture will then uh, define your new zero points and you are now continuously monitoring um, your patient during your SRS treatment without the use of ionizing radiation. Uh, so you start um, applying your treatment fields, and as I showed you before, HyperArc has at a certain point uh, a change of couch rotation, so Alina T can take this into account by choosing the um, uh, respective couch angle over uh, this uh, drop down menu. So, what will happen if you choose a different angle like 45 degrees? It will display it to you by rotating the 3D model, uh, but the real time deltas that are shown are always um, based on the couch zero position, so that won't change. Um, I would like to show you another video here um, of a live hyper arc treatment. So couch is at zero, the gantry has done a full rotation, is about to end the uh, full arc, and then the couch will move to the left, to the 45 degree position. And what we see is that the rotation or yaw here 
we'll move out of tolerance because we are still at the zero position. Now the RTT is choosing the different angle. The, uh, the real-time delta flips over to the other side and decreases now. So as soon as the couch reaches target position, the gantry will carry on with the treatment. So please take notice that um, besides the rotation that of course has to change, all the other dimensions are pretty solid, pretty uh, well within the tolerance of one millimeter, one degree, which is like uh, testifying for the mechanical quality of the whole system and also uh, yeah, for the monitoring quality of alignity. So this is the whole hyper arc treatment or workflow has been really optimized towards speed and it's really possible to uh, fit this SRS treatment within the treatment slot of 10 minutes. So including your imaging and Combium CT. So after that, uh, I would like to uh, f say a little something about the commissioning we did before we started treating our first patient. So we did quite a lot because we were the first institution in Germany or the third one worldwide to implement HyperArc and the first one in combination with Vision RT. So we wanted to do it right. We did a lot of commissioning and a lot of QA later in, before every single patient, I think up to now. And um, I want to focus on to the Align RT MV Isocenter calibration. Um, what is it? It is uh, an option and tool that um, allows you an automated fine tuning to, op to have an optimal matching between the isocenter that Align RT is calibrated on and the imaging isocenter of the LINAC, which is now um, supposed to be uh, the mechanical isocenter of the LINAC right now. So we're using a cube phantom here with radio pack markers. Uh, which is the connecting link between the two systems because the radiographic imaging can see and evaluate the position of the markers from different perspectives and the SGLT system can see the surface and because the characteristics are in a fixed relationship, you can uh, match your two systems or we are matching a line RT onto the imaging system. So why is this so important for uh, hyperarc treatment, uh, SS or non coplanar treatments in, in, uh, especially, it's because we're dealing with couch rotations here. So if you assume that you have a discrepancy between the imaging or LINAC isocenter and your isocenter and align RT, and it's, we, let's just assume it would be like one millimeter, and if you're having couch rotations now, what will happen? Uh, the couch will, or the patient will rotate around the LINAC isocenter in reality, and it will rotate around a different isocenter within the Alina T software. If we watch that simultaneously, it will result in something like this. And what we can see now here from the three points that uh, are shown there is that um, you have to take into account that the error between the isocenter positions and what Aligner T is monitoring will increase by a factor of the square root of two, so roughly 1.4 at a maximum couch angle of 90 or 270 degrees. So if you have like an, an error that would be uh, below one millimeter at couch zero, you would have one that would be larger than one millimeter if you rotate the couch. So how do we do the calibration? We take a set of orthogonal MV images because we want to calibrate, always calibrate onto the actual treatment beam, not the KV source. So um, you see here the set with the spheres that are in different positions because of the different gantry angles. And we compare, or the software compares it to the real time deltas, um, which has been calculated by the surface of the cube. And you get a uh, screen like this where you see the, uh, the aligner T deltas, the radiographic shifts from the imaging, and the calibration difference, which is now uh, not zero, but if you calibrate the system, repeat the procedure, this per definition is supposed to be zero. So we were asking ourselves, that's, that's good, so it's supposed to be zero, but how can we verify that the system really works like this, or so as the quality? And for example, you can compare, uh, you can, conduct the procedure also with the KV system. 
versus a liner T at Koch zero, and um, it's nominally an independent system. So what you see is that over uh, numerous um, QAs, we see that they're in good agreement of one point, uh, 0 0.1 millimeters or below. So this is due to the fact that at the Trubin platform, the KV system is very well matching the MV system if you use the variant ISO cal calibration. Um, to move one step further, you look, say, okay, this is not what we're doing. We are rotating the couch when we're treating patients. So uh, if you have the MV system versus the aligner T, at couch angles uh, different from zero, you cannot uh, see all six degrees of freedom anymore, but the, pro the dimensions of the projection, and you see there is a good agreement of nine, over 90, well over 90% of all the points uh, equal or less than 0 0.5 millimeters here. And then we thought, okay, how can we like, um, get even closer to clinical situation? So the last thing we did was comparing an MV imaging um, under very clinical conditions. We're using the anthropomorphic D phantom of the company Sears, and we're really uh, creating a clinical hyperarch plan, and then um, acquiring MV images from the very starting angles of the semi-arcs of the hyperarch plan, comparing or um, evaluating them in offline match, comparing them to the respective real-time deltas that we recorded while taking the image, and here again in this very clinical situation is that Alana T in, has a good agreement of uh, equal or less than 0 0.6 millimeters or degrees respectively for every couch angle here. So let me summarize. Um, again, also for the SRS niche is that uh, when you're using an SGRT system, you uh, see more, you get an information yield already during patient setup, which is uh, beneficial for you because uh, it uh, helps speed up the process and it gives you less corrections. Uh, so your six degree of freedom coach does not have to do that much. Um, great advantage is you have continuous live monitoring without the use of ionizing radiation during your stereotactic treatment. Gives you a high sense of security. Uh, everyone who hears the high dose rates of like 24 grays per minute kick in for the first time can relate to that. They hear the sound, it's uh, really a peace of mind when you see a monitoring system that you can trust. And uh, yes, uh, for regarding the commissioning, uh, we saw as a very good agreement between the radiographic imaging systems of the LINAC well in the sub-millimeter range, even at couch kicks. So I can just advise you, let your physicists do some tests, do some commissioning, and consider it a trust-building activity for the system's precision. So thank you for your attention. For this interesting talk. There, there was a question from Slido. Um, did it ever happen that you have to interrupt a treatment session because of the SGRT information? Um, for the, I've, I've roughly seen 30 uh, treatments with HyperArc now, and there were, were like two or three where the Vision RT or the Line RT system showed us that one of the dimensions was like scratching at the one millimeter tolerance. So that we're, we're lucky that the mechanical qualities are good for of the whole setup, but um, we've only seen that once, so it's up to the radiant colleges to decide. If, if there's only, it usually happened at the maximum couch uh, rotation of 90 degrees or so, and uh, that's when there are only like 100 monitor units left of about 8,000. So the radio culture said, okay, we're not intervening anymore now, let's say. So it worked out for like the majority of the patients very well. <laughs>